All right, we are live. And it is both a good day and a bad day, a bitter, a sweet moment for Bengals fans. We just got crushed by the New Orleans Saints. But, uh, you know, we there is there is reason to believe things are What's going rainbow? to change. What's the rainbow? I don't think, there's no reason things are change. So that you didn't know this because it was breaking. I just told him and he was it was such bad news that he didn't believe me. And that is the that is the shocking and horrible news that the man that nobody else wants in the NFL has just been hired by the Cincinnati Bengals. Now no one knows exactly in what capacity yet. Right. He's been hired as, as part of the coaching staff, and I'm talking about your Hugh Jackson. Right. Hugh Jackson, who made the Browns possibly worse than they were before he came, has been welcomed back to the Bengals with open arms. Because you know why? If you make a crap pie and swim around in it, the Bengals uh -huh. like that. They like the they like the kid who thinks that, that clown, the really untalented clown, is actually funny. This is not funny. We don't want to the accent back. I, you know, it's funny because I tweeted. I tweeted today. I was like, why is everyone trashing on Marvin? You trash on Marvin. What do you think, what do you think Mike Brown is going to go do? He's going to go hire a worse head coach. And he has. Because yeah. even, I'm just going to let me finish the rant because I'm going to wrap it up. Here. Pretty much done. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what you guys gotta realize. Uh, the, the reports have not told us what his role is going to be. He might be hired as per an amb amb ambiguous role. They might leave Laser as offensive coordinator and have him sort of fill in the gaps while Marvin is doing the defensive coordinator stuff. But I want everyone to see what's happening, which is that they are grooming you to complete the dream and become the head coach. For some reason, they want him to be the head coach of the Bengals. And that's what's happening. This is really bad because he's actually worse than Marvin. Well, yeah, no, he's a much worse head coach, uh, you know, and, and you know, uh, John, uh, help me out here. Okay, Bill Lazer, this is a discussion I had with Ryan Royalex on Twitter, who's I know a guy you respect very much, a very, very knowledgeable guy about football. And uh, we had this tweeting back and forth, and, uh, you know, I said, I I'm pretty sure that Bill Lazer is not responsible for the conservative play calling, because I remember... After that, um, remember Joe Mixon last year, his first game, I think, against the Steelers, he was dominant in the first half, seven yards per carry, six, seven yards per carry. He's great, right? And then the second half, he got like one carry or something. I don't remember. Or no carries. I don't know. And then after they asked uh, Bill Lazor about it, he said, I don't make those calls. Do you remember that, John? I do, yeah. I and that. that that was it for me. I was like, okay, that is why we always have the same problems with, you know, uh, predictable, you know, whatever these power formations, these all these different problems we have, it goes back to Marvin Lewis. So I, my thing was, let's see what Laser can do. You know, just give him the the reins. I'd be happier trying la Laser in the head coach position over uh, over over uh, Hugh. But but uh, I mean, just anything but Hugh, please, man, anything but Hugh Jackson. This man has this man. Is is like it it is like the, the train that everybody keeps riding and and it just doesn't get to the destination. I mean, like you know, he was he was he's at the Raiders. It didn't work out. He was he wasn't really and people people don't remember he wasn't even all that successful in the Bengals as offensive coordinator. Everybody remembers 2015, but it's not just about 2015. There was a lot. Of, I mean, he, he his play calling I was not impressed with. He, if you guys remember, there were so many times he would do these weird things with was like third and 20 and he would run the ball. I don't know if you guys remember the crazy thing that he would do. I, he, I, don't, I don't know, man. He's like the weird guy at a party that you keep talking to. Like, oh, you're here? And he's like, yeah, I'm here. And nobody knows why he's here. Why are you here, Hugh? Why are you on our team, you? Well... Zach, you weren't invited. I didn't invite you. Daddy, did you invite you? I mean, I hate to be awkward here, but Hugh, please go back home to the Browns. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Here's the thing about Hugh. His role is not going to be. Uh, it's not clear yet what his role is going Do, to be. It doesn't doesn't matter. It do, it doesn't matter. All right. And I think we can relate the Hugh Jackson hiring back to something that was written or that was um, found out before that he was eventually hired. So the whole thing with um, because Ter Terrell Austin also got fired at the. That was the main reason why we started the stream in the first place. Terrell Austin got fired. And the whole ramifications of his firing was a lot of confusion in the locker room with, you know, what was going on in the defensive room. 
And eventually, the the main thing that stuck out to me was that, well, I, I think one one source from the organization said that um, Austin wasn't getting through to the players, and a lot of finger pointing was 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 happening because you know the blame was being shifted. Austin's message wasn't getting through to the players, and eventually a lot of blame started going around. So hearing that, right, like at six o'clock today, and then seeing the one guy who in the past two weeks has pointed more fingers at everybody he can possibly imagine in Hugh Jackson. It's just, it's the, it's the definition of irony. It's the definition of insanity. And it makes perfect sense that the but, Bengals but, be but, at the forefront of all this. But John, Hugh did also take down Todd Haley. So can he take down Marvin no. Lewis? No, no. Can he do no. it? No. Why do we no. want to? Marvin, no, take Daniel both of them Marvin. out. Take himself yes. out and He's Marvin Lewis. Marvin can he do it? Look, Does look. he have, because he has talent. Hugh is a snake. He's a yeah. parasite. He's a compulsive Is he liar. A snake enough he's, to and he still he this? still can't do it to Marvin. Marvin has diplomatic immunity yeah. in that building. Yeah. Yeah. And apparently, Marvin so does Lewis, Hugh Jackson. Marvin Marvin Lewis taught him how to as leader. No, let me. Can I can I just use a, a metaphor that Daddy would understand? Hugh is like the Jared Kushner in this scenario. <laughs> Everybody else might get fired. Hugh is not going to get fired. Like Okay, listen. Maybe it's because he's the most qualified. I know. Mean, if anybody, that, that if anybody, always, yeah. You've always talked about how Mike Brown, you know, runs this organization like a family. He yeah. was part of Mike Brown's family. Let, let, okay, let me be clear about. This. And let me be. Clear. Let me clear about something. Okay, hold on. I say I've said from the beginning. If I want anybody on this staff, and this was including last year, to and the reason I'm even entertaining people on this staff. Just because that's the only way Mike Brown operates. It's going to be someone from the staff or someone he knows or someone that works with him. Someone he can get really cheap. The only guy I wanted was Bill Lazor. Not because I believe in Bill Lazor, but because he's the wild card. And he has a little bit of a jerk personality to him. I think maybe he can ruffle some feathers and make some actual things happen. Yeah, the reason we all like Lazor is because he's different and he's not part of this incestuous right, right, that's true. Yeah. That's also why he's not moving up the ranks, you see? That's this, a very good point. So, so when, yeah. when, when, when Terrell was, was fired, I was like, I tweeted this out. I was like, man, this is actually a good thing. They should fire Terrell. And Marvin stepping up on, on being defensive coordinator, he's a great defensive coordinator. You might remember early in the season, I was saying it's like a sandwich shop and Marvin's sandwich is the defense. He does a good job with it, let him do it. But what I didn't see, and I was so dumb, Dad, you are so dumb, John, I didn't see it coming is that this was all a ruse to bring you in because it's Marvin stepping yeah. back. Marvin's working on defense. It's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm just going to make the flapjacks. You go to the grill and you take care of the whatever. But 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 this is all a ruse to slowly get you all up in the head coach position. He might he won't be yeah. called the head coach. He won't be called that yet. But this is all about next year. This is about the Bengals' legacy, the Bengals' future, and it is just, just spinning down the drain, down the toilet. Well, look, so I, I, I'm i trying to understand. Let, let, let's look at the roles that Hugh has had on this team. He was the running back coach. He was the secondary coach. He, I think he was like washing the jerseys at one point. They gave him all sorts of opportunities. He was long before that. Like yeah. In the 2000s. It, it basically yeah. confirms that position coaches don't, don't matter what you're experiencing. No, no. What I am trying to say is they just want him in the organization. It's not clear if he's going to have a huge role or not. But maybe I mean, it's not clear. They literally have the contingency plan planned back in 2016. No, oh, oh, I see. So you're not worried about this year. You're worried no, about this year. He's a commander. He could be the offensive quality control. He would yeah. serve as less impact than what happens the rest of the season. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And the people who fail to the people who fail to recognize that they're ignorant to the fact that this is a bigger plan going on. Just yeah. like what no, that's for sure. but, but the no, issue. Maybe, maybe he's just going to get a job somewhere. Right? He's, yeah. Yeah. Building, he's yeah. a threat to take yeah. over. Yeah. That's the exact opposite thing that we want. Yeah. John, one thing, one thing. Uh, do you guys remember when Terrell Austin was hired? Do you remember how there was a succession plan being thrown no, around? That was a ruse. That, that, that was not true at all. Okay. What about Vance Joseph? I don't, that maybe. was very explicit. No, Marvin Lewis said he's going to take over for me one day. And then, he, sure. and then he got another job, just like you got another job, and now he's yeah. back. So maybe yeah, there were a lot of people that were in this position. Okay, Gruden was in this position. Gruden, you have a lot yeah. of people who are, who are in this position, but Hugh is the only one who's unemployed who's enough. Never, to never, who's never going to get another NFL head exactly. coach? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I said that. But Hugh, has Hugh gotten Hugh, a fair Hugh, shot? Hugh, you know, Hugh, he won Hugh, two games Hugh, in just three years. 
as I said, Hugh is the only one who's unemployed enough to make it work. Hugh, Hugh, is, it, it, it's, it's, he, he, it's like, it's so much exactly what the Bengals would go for. Yeah. Why? Let me ask you, what have I done wrong to be a Bengals fan? Why can't my team, really, why can't my team just put down the money, hire some hotshot coach from outer space that everybody else wants, but only we got, and then bring him in. Why can't we ever be that team? You know what's funny is that uh, I've said this for a while. The only, I mean, the only t- type of guy that I think could come in and change the culture that that the, you know, Mike Brown would consider is a guy like John Harbaugh. But that's that's not or Jim Harbaugh. Sorry, uh, but that is not uh, that's not going to happen. So we know we all know it's going to happen. The best case scenario is we get the next Dave Shula, some crabby coach. That nobody wants because otherwise it's just going to be some coordinator that they promote. That's just yeah, the way it and, is. And here, 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 I'm so dumb. I thought the culture had changed. I mean, last last week where they had a bye week, I was like, you know, this team is so conservative, but now on LGBTQ issues, they're they're having a bye week. I'm all for it. But you know, I mean, like honestly, this team just never changes. I don't even get it, man. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. So let's let's go back to the positives here. Okay. So Terrell Austin against the Saints, the Bengals, they gave up uh, 51 points and it was it was painful. You know, I saw at least, you know, I want to say at least I saw like 10 15 minutes of that game before I turned it off. And it was very painful and uh you know, but in the end it could have saved our season. Now, whatever you want to say about Marvin Lewis, he is a better uh, defensive coordinator, and he's a better defensive coordinator for this team, right? I mean, he knows these guys, and and uh, I mean, really, our only issue now, I would say, is a lack of linebackers. You know, is we don't have linebackers. Where in the world is Vantes perfect? I saw him at UC the other day. He was at the UC Ohio State game. He was looking all right, but obviously not healthy enough to play. Hmm. He's still nursing that. I think it's a hip injury. I want to say, man, man, lots of bad injuries too. I mean, you, I, listen. <clears throat> people talked about the under. This is the thing. Raz, laser is under the the, the 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 microscope for poor performance. But the I give the guy credit. I mean, first of all, that first drive against. Yeah. These, but, this, but, yeah. All right, all right. I, I think this is this is the appropriate time to talk about this. Are we sure that Bill Laser is more valuable to the Bengals than Tyler Eifert? Because I, because just looking at in the no that's what I was saying oh that's what I sorry I was yeah, yeah, exactly. let me hear John let me hear John yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, so he's been here for I believe as, as the offensive coordinator for few games last year nine games this year it's twenty five games right Tyler Eifert's been healthy for I think four of them and in that four game stretch the Bengals offense looked by far better than the other twenty one games now I, I know that both of you like Laser a lot and what he did last year when he took over it was decent at the beginning. But I think they still finished last year last in like total time possession, last in plays run near the bottom of the league in yards. And obviously that positive regression hit at the start of this year when Eifert was on the field, when he was making an impact just with his presence. Ever since Eifert was, was injured week four, Bengals offense has been in the bottom 10 in most major categories in terms of yards, points, like points per play, all that kind of stuff. And Laser hasn't made the proper adjustments to adapt the offense around him. And I, I just... And obviously, losing Eifert hurts. Losing, you know, Bird, Giovanni Bernard for that time hurts. Losing your starting center makes it up the cohesion of the offensive line. And then losing AJ Green hurts. All those injuries hurt. But yeah. I, I just think that we, we need to slow down the, the praise that we've been giving Bill Lazor because just like with Hugh Jackson, who didn't have Tyler Eifert for 2014 and then got him back for 2015, everything looked great. It is, his overall impact has changed the perception of both Hugh Jackson and Bill Lazor as offensive coordinators here. And I just think that that's something that we need to first, I think, step back and look at before we crown Bill Lazor as the potential next head coach of this team. Well, I don't, I don't know about head coach. No, 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 no. First of all, I, I, what I mean to say is if we, if this were a try and the, uh, the New Orleans Saints was the, was the crime, the New Orleans Saints game was the crime. And what was the other one we lost so badly? I'm trying to Chiefs. Remember. Chiefs. Yeah. And see, get, these are two really top teams. Those are really two. Very and bad even, defenses. Very bad. Doesn't yeah. matter because they can still score out of the wazoo. The Bengals can't seem to do that. 
Well, but that's the thing. That's what I was going to say. So if we wanted to have a trial and see who's really at fault here, I think it is fair to say that it was the defense and and Austin and, and you know it, it was the it was the whole defense really that was the that was the at fault. The offense was in a position very soon where it had to catch up. And of course, the play calling in, in that kind of scenario changes. If they didn't have to keep play catch up to this defense that couldn't be stopped by, you know, I mean, the defense couldn't stop their offense, then then our offense would have looked much better. Our offense hasn't been great. I, 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 can, under, I can understand the logic, but I, 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 you look at the four worst teams in terms of expected points allowed in defense. That's the Saints, the Rams, the Chiefs, and the Falcons. Three of those teams are the best teams in the NFL. Why? Because they have the three best offenses in the NFL. In today's game, if you can't score anything, if you can't score over 20 points or 30 points on a regular basis, and that is more impactful than having major defensive issues because the best teams in the league, they can't stop anybody, but it doesn't matter because they've built a scheme and have players that can score at will. And the Bengals, even with all the injuries that they've had, they've had the chance to do that on a weekly basis and beat Wait a minute. They lost to, but they just haven't been able to score, and I think that's an equally important issue as well as the defense being absolute crap. So well, John, listen, look, John, I, am I, I hearing look, you right? Are yeah. you saying, John? Hold on. Are you saying that Andy Dalton is the issue? Because we moved beyond that, and Logan mm. can be so upset. Well, no, 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 no. Let's not. No, we need Logan because uh, I don't want him to ask for a refund on the donations he got us. But <laughs> look, but let me let me just say, yeah, I actually think that yeah, Andy Dalton had his worst game of the season. Now, look, I'll show you two uh, things that uh, stuck out to me on the highlight reel because you know I didn't see the game, but look at this. So uh, you're looking at Andy Dalton here. Okay, look at that time. Now. What do you do in this? Pause. That's why there's so much time. Okay, okay. So I won't pause this time. Ready? <laughs> Not gonna pause. Watch. Look at that time. Look at them. Look at look at going through like four different options. Well, of course, it's third and six. I mean, this is not that was a bad play, right? That was not acceptable. And then you think of look at the, what was the score at that time? 21-7 is still in the game, right? And then you look at the big opportunity he had with uh, Ross here. Right, twenty-eight seven. Okay, but but this kind of turned the game. I mean, not turned the game, but this ended the game. Like if we score here, look, we're on the thirty-nine yard line. Uh, get another like ten yards, get a field goal, maybe you know. But look at look at how underthrown it is, mm -hmm. right? Look it, at how underthrown well, it, it is. Like it's actually insane that John Ross has, I think, like 13, 15 targets. Three of them were touchdowns, and the other ten were have been completely awful throws by Andy Dalton. Yeah, Excellent. I mean, well, well, uh, to give well, Hoji uh, credit, he said this when he drafted John Ross that you know he's too fast, too fast, too fast for yeah, Dalton. Too fast. And I'm not, uh, that's not a slight against Dalton. Well, no, no, we don't. We're not going to technically. We, we're not going to criticize Dalton. He's no, too fast for his own good. It's his fault. I mean, it's not Dalton's no, fault. No, but I mean, it's just not working out. Yeah. Like, it's like it's like if I put on Air Jordans, I'm not going to dunk. I'm just gonna yeah you're gonna only walk or you're walk. gonna fly so high that you're gonna hit your head like, on, the, no, on the rim and yeah the, 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 the Ross is the Air Jordans of uh, of 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 the quarter, of wide receivers and and, and yeah. he can't throw that far or that you know I mean yeah yeah and I don't know that as a slight he he's good on the short you got you got to use the quarterback the way he is he's really good with the fast and short yeah. Well, we had a few other, you know, kind of plays like that. And, and you, my point is, my point is, this, Dalton picked a bad game. I got to say, on the first drive against the New Orleans Saints, the Bengals actually looked just as sharp as they did. So question for John, what happened that the first drive looked so great, but everything after that? Well, I think I know what the answer is. I know what John's going to say. I, I want to hear Daddy's answer. Well, I know what it is. It's that we have a, a few design plays, you know, that work until the defense kind of figures out what we're trying to do that day, and then we can't adjust. We don't have, we don't, our playbook, you can't go beyond what the first like 20 plays or so are. This is scripted place. Yeah. Are our players not as smart as the other players? No, it's our coaches special aren't special as smart. Special our special coaches special. aren't as smart. And that and that's kind of where the blame falls on Laser a little bit because he, 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 he but that's he what I'm saying. How much he institutes, do we know? he institutes it. Well, yep. we, 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 we don't know the diet, the dichotomy between the relationship between Lewis and Laser. Right. We know, we know the scheme that laser has it's pretty beneficial to the personnel that he has but the lack of diversity as the game goes on to the lack of adjustments to what the defense is adjusting and spe specifically with pressure packages just route co concepts and whatnot all, all that's definitely up in the air but we, we know that laser can start the game well with a solid game script and he can't 
it, 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 it's truly unique watching the Bengals offense and the Rams offense and just how stark the difference is in terms of play callings, in terms of adjustments, in terms of the trends of what type of personnel packages that they roll out there and how the Bengals, you know, when they need score points in the second and third quarter to catch up because of defense is faltering, it's the most bland offense you'll ever see. And I well, really yeah. wonder how much of that is on laser. Well, I'll tell you. First of all, I know what, what Marvin Lewis is and Leia's uh, relationship is like because you can just tell when you look at Marvin Lewis, he's not the chatty type. I don't think they even talk that much. But here's the thing. If you guys remember, the big critique against Hugh Jackson was that his plays were too complicated. And when people brought Laser, everyone was saying, oh, Laser's working out better because his plays are so simple. I don't know if you guys remember this. I distinctly remember this. And it was that they were too complicated for... Uh, the, 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 the players to, to actually pull off. That was the complaint against Hugh Jackson. And I think in a way it was true. They had these really convoluted plays. They weren't working out well. Well, well, well look. look he simplified it. He streamlined it. Well, but this is the thing about Hugh Jackson that he offers is that somehow he got across to Dalton. And with Dalton, with issues being mental, you know, maybe that... But, you know, I just look at, like, look, okay, look at this one. Look at this. So Dalton again, third and four, right? Look at the time. I won't pause it this time for just for you, OG. I mean, I'm one, not saying it's incredible two. protection, but you got to be more aware, right? And then I look know. again. Look I, again, targeting Ross. What happens here? What was up with his accuracy? Like, at, at this point, he probably had the yips, which is always an issue with him if he gets sacked early in the game. He's just never that kind He just gets he, thrown off his game. He's, yeah. n- he's never that kind of quarterback that will readjust his rhythm late in the game. Yeah. And, and, and it's, 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 it's the sacks that kill the drives. I actually hear. I just found another one. I mean, these hi- this is these highlights are a lot of lowlights, really. I mean... Why doesn't he... Well, you know, have you guys ever watched... I'm sure you have. Aaron Rodgers, how he does that little jiggle and a shake, and then he moves... Oh, to I him. love jiggle. Yeah, yeah, I love the jiggle. He moves to the right. Even, even with one foot sometimes. Yeah, so why is look, look at this time again. Guys, you know what we have to do? We have to write him a letter and say, do the jiggle and the shake. You got to watch some video. Or, oh, or we could get the guy that was closest to Aaron Rodgers in the entire NFL and have him. Co- oh, wait a second. We have that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course he knows about ben, the jiggle and the shake. Ben Pell's still a good coach. Ben Pell's still a good coach. I'll give him that. He is. I'm saying there's only so much you can do. A lot of it is just yeah. like, you know, I have this, this guy I know on Twitter. He says, you know, the players are who they are, right? His name is John Shearer. Huh? Yeah, oh. he talks about this all the time. Yeah, yeah, John, he's a, yeah, he's a draftist. Everybody knows that. Yeah, John is a little bit draftist. He's a little bit draftist, but, uh, you know, that's a, that's true. Yeah, I mean, uh, remember we had, uh, who is that guy has the, has the thing about the people's progressions and how much better they are than others in high school and college. And my point is, you know, Aaron Rodgers, his ability, he showed it, I think, uh, a lot earlier. So, yeah, Dalton is who he is. Dalton is who he is. So now we got some games coming up, okay? We got your, what, Ravens-Browns coming up? Yeah. Uh, what What is this? I mean, what, you know, like, so, so I mean. Well, the Ravens, we can win. That is uh, Lamar Jackson. He's probably yeah. going to have a breakout game. But, I mean, we do, uh, you know. We, we do what? Ravens. We usually I mean, AJ Green does well against the Ravens. That's true. So Not we playing. don't have AJ Green. So what do we do? I don't know. And he's, not, he's got, definitely not. He's not going to be back the next game for sure, right? He's no. not. He's not playing till December. Okay. Man. That's like playoff season. I don't think we're going to make it that far, guys. This this car's running out of gas pretty fast, uh, and uh, someone's got to do something. Wait, 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 which to their point is why the Austin firing is at least commendable because it would have made a lot more sense to do. I, I, I honestly wonder had the Buccaneers completed their comeback and the Bengals lost that game, they're four and four going into the bye week giving up, you know, three consecutive games of almost 500 yards at that point. I wonder if Austin's fired then, and then they can make that change quicker. No, no, no. The 51 points is what they did in. You, you, you think so? Yeah. I think the video points stood out so much. People left the game. They were booing. Like, there was, like, five people left in the stadium. That is what did it because Mike Brown is like, if I can't sell tickets, then okay. you know. That, that is true because a lot of – but there wasn't a lot of people at the Buccaneers game either. 
So they the, already should have seen that coming. And everyone knows that the Bengals got lucky in that Buccaneers game. The Buccaneers probably should have won that game. So I want, but obviously it was a win, and Mike Brown was going to be like, "Yeah, I mean, we won, so it doesn't matter." Even Ter- even Terrell Lawson said, I-, "I don't care about how many yards we give up. I yeah. just care about wins and losses." Wins and losses, then, yeah. Then he ended up losing because they gave up 509 yards and 51 points. So I, 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 I just wonder. You know, like how much different it is now if they're like four and five, and Lewis has like a, like a week under his belt as the defensive coordinator, and just how much difference that would make. Because obviously, even even with you know Austin fired, they weren't going to beat the Saints. The Saints were just a better team. So yeah, the Saints were a better team. I, I used to say a loss is a loss, and then I watched the Bengals play the New Orleans. <laughs> A loss is not just a loss. When you're embarrassed, you become demoralized. When you're demoralized, you will not win the next game. It tears apart the very fabric of the team. You see, I'm trying out for head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. This would be my locker room speech. So yeah. I, I really think that, uh, you know, I, this is going to sound strange, but you, I've been complaining a lot about Stephen A. Smith, and I'm sick of the guy picking on Marvin Lewis. I'm sick of the guy coming in and talking about this team, but I'm starting to be of the opinion that people have to start putting pressure on Mike Brown to make a serious change with this alignment. I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about the juggling act. He juggled. He juggled. I'm, t- I'm sick of the juggling act. Mike Brown, I know you're listening to the show. I know you watch the show. How many times have I said something in my hojoscope and you told Marvin Lewis that he has to do what I say? Trying on fourth down, for example, and all the other stuff. I know you watch our show. So Mike Brown, listen to me, man. We are getting sick of this. I told you people are going to start, stop watching. We're getting sick of this. Please get us a real head coach. I do not want you, Jackson. Anybody but you, Jackson. You want a real one. Okay, all right, all right. So I, I have a question for both of you then. Um, yeah. Because I don't know why I'm talking about lasers so much, but this 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 was this was in my mind at the start of the show. So early in the game, it's 14-7. to seven. They almost have fourth and one. Matt Lingle, who the tight end that they signed about a month ago off the Texans practice squad, he false starts, right? So it becomes fourth and six now yeah, at their that. own 45-yard line. If, at this point, Marvin Lewis is the defensive coordinator, he's not has no influence in calling the plays on offense, if I Bill Lazor, is Bill, if, does Bill Lazor still go for it on the fourth I think and six? I could think he's doing it, yeah, because he knows his job is on the line, and he's a reasonable person. Like He doesn't have Marvin Lewis's security. So he's like, hey... If everybody, all the fans, because look, let's be, let's say, okay, the smarter coaches and people in any sort of business these days know that uh, perception, public perception is very important. That's why they throw out these rumors. You know this, John. They throw out yeah. the coach or the free agent to see what the fan base says. And then they make decisions sometimes. So anybody who's smart, they know what's going on with Bengals fans, where it's even if we're going to lose, it's like, hey, let's be exciting. Let's be competitive. No, 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 no. No, and no, so, I, so laser, laser knows that, hey, if I want to have a chance in Cincinnati, I'm going to have to do something different. I'm going to have to change the culture. I'm going to do something. And, uh, you know, I do think that he would have gone for a 46, knowing, I, like most coaches in this league, not named Marvin Lewis, most of them know that when you're playing a team like the Saints, you have to take every opportunity, you know? Yeah. No, no. I'll tell you what. You yeah. guys don't get one thing about fans. Fans want you to go for it on fourth when you make it on fourth. But then when you don't make it on fourth, they say, why did you go for it on fourth? That's what Marvin Lewis I, 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 think, I think most fans, specifically for the Bengals, are recognizing that the process matters more than the results because we've seen the process fail so many times and how the process is now evolving into a more radical and progressive type of form. The, the, the true fans, the true fans that we should care about, they care about the process. They care about how things get done instead of, instead of what things get done. Yeah, I think the you process matters. You're an elite squad, John. You're, you're an intelligent I have, I have faith in the elite squad. I don't. I, I don't There's, have a lot of faith in anything nowadays, but I have faith in that elite let squad. Me, let me ask you. This is something I've been wanting to talk about. I want to make a whole scope about this later, but I'll ask you about it now. Would the fans be okay if, let's say, in the draft we got rid of our first round, we traded away our first round draft pick for more second round draft picks, which is a smarter move strategically. The, 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 it's been it's been statistically proven that second that more, having more second draft round uh, second round draft picks benefits the team more than having that first rounder. Yeah, especially the Bengals when they don't do very well in the first round. But no, we all, we've we, we've really done well in the, yeah, the, fans, the, fans, the, fans, the fans don't know stuff. 
The, I mean, I'm a fan and I know stuff, but I'm talking about the other fans. They don't really know stuff. Well, uh, well look, look. Okay, so I just want to real quick get to Bill Laser and stuff. And I just want to point out that uh, because he was on our show, you know, um, the part of the blame again on this game will not has to go on Andy Dalton. And you look at when Jeff Driscoll, you know, he's on our show, and I don't, I don't, I don't think that had anything to do with this. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. But he comes in, look. Everything. Look at the, well, look, look at the accuracy, look at the velocity, look at the arm. He gets it to John Ross. This is the first time we've seen someone hit John Ross in a stride more than two yards down the field. He, he, right? that, that is an hungry, for, that is a hungry man for a, for, for a starting QB position. I mean, look at this. John, look at that. It's a good That's pass. a beautiful ball. It's a back That's of cornerback, a, but. So John, the placement of the ball with that velocity. It was that, almost like a drone strike. You don't think that's well, a big I, I, I think what we should be talking about is like a drone strike I, into his arms. Hold on, John, hold on. The, the draftist in you has oh, to God. appreciate Jeff Driscoll. He, he's Jeff Driscoll. He, 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 no, he is what he is. No, go back to the, <laughs> the draftist in you. He was like a number one prospect coming what? out. What? High school, high school. High school. Oh, five, sorry, he went to LA. He went to Florida. He had to transfer. If you have to transfer from Florida to LA Tech, you're not good. Something I don't know. No, 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 no. But, but, but the Saints have a running quarterback in Taysom Hill. We all saw him. I was actually surprised that the Bengals decided, hey, we're going to use our running quarterback in the same way that you guys did yours, and that that's exactly what they've done that scoring draft. So at that moment, there was a, there was a sheer glimmer of hope that they had some yeah, confidence going Dark forward. Is way more than a running quarterback. I mean, that is ridiculous. <laughs> But look, look, okay, look. She's look at slow. this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He comes in, he plays like two plays, and he gets us a touchdown. Can somebody explain this? That was a fourth down, by the way. Fourth yeah. down conversion. Wow. So you're telling me Laser wouldn't wouldn't want to do more of that. No, because he did. He did in the first quarter. And it didn't it didn't happen after that. It, it happened on the first scoring drive. They they kept it for a read option that went for eight yards. Yeah. I just think Dalton had his worst game of the season. I think part of the reason was because building up to this week, everybody's like, we have no chance. Just like in the Chiefs game. And Dalton with the mental pressure. And maybe you will help in that regard, by the way. No. With Dalton overcoming no. his, his insecurities. Don't fall for it. Don't, don't, don't give in to the you thing, the you factor. We're sick of this stuff, man. We got to get... That's what I'm saying, man. We got to start... Hey, hold, hold, hold on, John. I want to talk about something else real quick. John. John. Uh, let's get back to Marvin Lewis, okay? Because I want to know this. How much has defenses changed since he was last uh, a defensive coordinator? Monumentally. So we, can, is there any chance he would be, you know, a top defensive coordinator? Yeah, probably. Um, if he ever leaves Cincinnati, I would, and still wants to coach, I'm sure a few teams give him a call for defensive coordinator. Yeah. Right now, as acting defensive coordinator, is there any chance he's going to be really good at it? Yes. I, yeah, I, I think he'll be all right. I, I, because there's he's a genius. B, b, he's besides, a defensive besides maybe Jim has it, there was nobody better who could he do it at this moment. You know what has it? Who? What? Say John is what has it as defensive coordinator. Yeah, b, b, because unless they did this, he was the he was the logical choice to do that because yeah. he had his past experience doing so. But you know, Marvin Lewis obviously has experience because he did back in Baltimore. He's he he knows that you know, despite the players that he brings in to, to fill his roles, he knows that defenses have evolved. But he also knows you know, guys are going to play for him, and, and I think that the main reason why Austin didn't succeed is that he didn't get the message across. But but the player players obviously like Marvin Lewis, and that's that's obviously a thing. He's whatever message he's going to send this week, they're going to they're going to understand it, and the impact that he's going to have less on the offensive side of the ball could potentially help Laser. It overall the move was good and I was happy with it, and then what? It, and then of course they snuffed it out with Hugh Jackson. So. Yeah, the, 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 it's like the captain. It's like the captain of the ship used to be a sous chef, okay, and now he's coming back down to the kitchen and he's going to start doing it again. You don't lose those traits. You don't lose that training. It's instinctual at this point. He's going to come back. The defense is going to be fine. I think it was a great move for him. We to don't do know that. if it's going to be fine. We it'll be better. better. We don't know if it's going to be like competent. Because they're still lacking bodies. Yeah, uh, yeah. Th that's how I use the word "fine." I didn't mean like "fine," like "fine." But anyways, you know, like you just the, agree with John. Yeah, I, I tend you to do that, that every time, man. I every agree with John that I end up being right. Don't you get it, man? I want to keep my job. I'm like the Marvin Lewis of this show. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> don't you get it? I keep, I just keep agreeing with him. I don't want to lose my job. That's why I'm going to start firing you all guys. Right, all right, that's wrong. 
I'm going to be like, okay, daddy, it's time to go. I'm going to be feeling in the daddy position now. I just want to keep my job. Okay. Speaking of uh, keeping your jobs, a lot of people are like, hey, we gave you all this money to wow. uh, you know get puppets. And look at that. Can you see that, everybody? Can everybody see that? I, yeah. Beautiful. That, that is me. That is daddy, the puppet. I love it. I am in the process. Look I can't believe she decapitated you. <laughs> Well, she yeah, still right. decapitated me. That's actually it's. Yeah. I love the stash. I love the stash. It is much cooler. Stash. It's much cooler than your stash. I just love yeah. how people are saying that we weren't you weren't going to use this money for puppets and yeah, we have this. Yeah, well, it wasn't enough. We didn't have enough to flee with the money and. You know, well, you, you love conspiracy theory of the theories, Daddy. I'm surprised you didn't like that one. Show me where am I? Well, okay, so we get down here. We have Hobi. <laughs> Look at me. And, well, because we had a budget. We had a budget, so that is how, how much we could spend. In the process, process. I saw a better version of myself, actually, where they actually she had put the nose on. And it looked oh, good. Oh, Hoji, where, where is your tan oh, in that? Right. Well, oh, we decided to have the skin yet, John. That's not the skin yet. Oh, okay. John, we're trying to appeal to a wider Midwest demographic. So it's going to be white, Hoji. It's going to be <laughs> so here It's very have, tasteful. So here we have, look, you can listen to this on Rachel Burson's Instagram. It's, it's uh, uh, Welcome to the Jungle. And uh, it's Hoji singing to Welcome to the Jungle. Welcome to the Jungle. You get worse here day by day. Marvin Lewis keeps his job. But yeah. Terry Lustin goes away. And Hugh Jackson's coming back. I wish he didn't do that. Well, my head, my head isn't there anymore, so I have to stop. I can't, wait for the, I can't wait for the first Hoji music video to drop. Oh, it's coming. It's going to be great. I'm, I'm gonna be, Jay-Z is going to be on it. It's going to be great. Yeah, so that is uh, one announcement that the puppets are on the way. So thank you, Rachel. We're going to try to get her on the show, by the way, uh, to show us the uh, what is going on, how she's going through the process, how she kind of finds motivation and inspiration. Um also, I want to announce that we have our a second a starting lineup figure giveaway because we had the first one, and actually the person who won didn't claim his prize. So I'm still waiting for Romain to contact me with his address so I can send him his Corey Dillon starting lineup. Uh, but the second person to win, he won the Jeff Blake one, which is actually my favorite. It's my favorite player ever. And that's Mike McGilly, who won the Jeff Blake a starting lineup action figure. So we will have we have one left that is the Carl Piggins. We'll be giving that away in about a month. Any other uh, final thoughts, guys? Yeah, I just want to. I'm going to end by this. This is going to be my quote. So this is an article about Hugh Jackson. I'm just going to read the first line. This is a former Cleveland Browns head coach Hugh Jackson will rejoin the Cincinnati Bengals coaching staff starting Tuesday. Yeah. And just think about that. Think about those words. Former Cleveland Browns head coach. <laughs> that do you put that together? That's a recipe for disaster. Oh yeah. But I'll tell you one that's had a little bit of a success. Ever, you know. What? Oh well, no. That, no. I'm talking about the now Browns, not the Bill Belich. This is Bill Belich. Yes. Oh, he was the he was the old Browns. You're right. He was the old Browns. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah. They, now the Ravens. Yeah. All right. Former oh, Ravens yeah. coach Bill Belichick. Uh, all right. So, look. What if what if they just bring him in as QB coach? We don't have a QB coach. What if that's it, John? And but, just, uh, Van, Van Pell? No. He's oh, like, oh you, sorry. Yeah, we have Van Pell. Okay, okay. What if he's like? What do we? I, know? I, 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 I don't. I don't care what he is. It's not going to matter that much. That what I care. Perfect. What I care about is what his future is with the organization, yeah. and I know that he has one. Yeah. What is Katie Blackman running the show by then? You I agree know. with John. Uh, who, who knows? Who yeah. knows? Who knows? Yeah. All right. So someone says, uh, does the defense have the talent to be above the bottom fourth of the league? No. Uh, yes. Yeah, they do. Come on. Carl Jackson III, Jesse Bates. Yes, we have we have some really good defensive players, okay? Only place we don't have talent is linebacker. Yeah, but we did see how lackluster the pass rush was, that was without Carl Lawson. I think that's a concern. That's and a really good point. The, 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 sec the secondary obviously was exposed by the Saints, but the Saints do that with everybody. And I wonder how much of a difference Lewis calling the plays and implementing the scheme is going to have with, with 
um, William Jackson and Drake or Patrick, who to their, to their defense, they made a little bit of comeback, but then um, obviously the saints just tore apart the defense and that was mostly with the linebackers and they still have bodies there. So who knows? we already faced the two most dangerous offenses in the league. It can't get any worse. Right. Oh, oh my gosh. A Bengals fan should never utter those. <laughs> <laughs> when we start pushing into like the, you know, 60s, when we, they start scoring 60s on us and stuff, then Stephen A. Smith's going to be, oh, blah, blah, blah. You guys are so yeah, bad. Speaking of Stephen A. Smith, I actually, he makes me wonder root for Marvin Lewis. You know, I'm yeah, like so anti Marvin Lewis that I'm like, man. Man, give, it, it, man. give the guy a break. Yeah. All right. Well, <sighs> well, yeah. I think uh, most of our fan base is asleep. It wants to go to sleep, but thank you. And uh, we're going to have the puppets. Hopefully, uh, we don't know. We don't know. It's it's a process. You know, it's artistic, creative. I don't know about that and stuff. So hopefully soon, and the show will be vastly improved, even if the bangles are not. Thank you for listening so long. It's Fitty Pies.